Uh, oh, well, hey. Windshield's a little close to the seat in this one. How does this wheel tilt? I know it tilts. There it goes. Ah. Take some of that pressure off the old gut. Power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. All right. This actually is pretty comfortable for me for being such a big guy. I'm pretty impressed with it, actually. Come on. There we go. Come on, baby. Ah. Hey there, guys. Welcome to GBG. I'm up here in beautiful Ruskin, Florida. I think that's the Little Manatee River behind me. I'm not sure. That right there is a boathouse at my friend's property that was damaged by Hurricane Ian. It used to be a little bit more complete, but today's a good day because I get to profile, kind of do a GBG review of one of my favorite all-time cars. It's not really something I'm used to, but I always liked these cars when they first came out. I believe it was 89 or 90. I remember reading Motor Trend Magazine in high school and reading about these things and thinking they were just really cool. They ranked right up there with the five liter Mustangs and the IROC Camaros and things that I grew up with. Um, but I always thought these cars looked a little bit nicer because of the some of the features and quirks about them. So let me get you in here and show you what I'm talking about. This is a 1995 Mercedes-Benz SL500 Roadster. And it belongs to a very, very good friend of mine. One of the good things about having a lot of good car friends and growing up around cars as much as I did is I get the opportunity to profile these cars and offer them up for sale. And I've been selling some cars like this on eBay for 20, three years now with really good success. Really good feedback. Um, my friend's wife drove this car. She was a college professor. I think she's retired now. Beautiful shot of the river. This is a uh, five liter V8. These were the R129 nomenclature Mercedes chassis. This one's got AMG rims on it that I think she looked high and low to find. The originals are included with the sale, by the way. It's got a recent top put on it. The original top was navy blue. This has been replaced with black. The paint is in really good shape. I don't see any major issues with the exterior at all. The car has always been garage kept. Um, my friend owns property in New York. That's why it's registered up there, was at one time registered up there. I don't know if the car is from New York or not. Um, I don't think it is, but it was never driven in the winter. Here's the, here's the beautiful navy blue interior. The seats have been redone, from what I understand. There's my tripod that I bought off Amazon that already broke and I had to fix. I don't really know what that is. That might be a car cover, or maybe it's just a pillow. I'm not sure. The carpet's in great shape. Smoke-free vehicle. All the interior controls are in good shape. <clears throat> the only thing I noticed is this little panel right here is a little flimsy flimsy let me fire it up and we'll look under the hood just grab the keys here it has 89,000 miles on it wonder if i can figure out how to operate the hood oh right there okay duh i couldn't find how to open the hood but it it's a little gizmo right here in the emblem finally figured that out and here we go it's got a recent full tune-up. The car has been recently detailed. It has a little bit of a tick I can hear. The mechanic didn't seem to be too concerned about it. 
but it's been doing that since my friends bought it and nobody was ever too concerned with it let's see if i can get the top to operate okay down with the top we go there goes both windows uh oh rear hatch open makes a lot of noise but man is it cool and then the windows go back up at the end how clever is that how nice Let's try to put it back up now and see how that goes. I'm sure, I'm gonna get clocked in the head here. Nope. Wow, that is really slick. And it happens really quick, too. That's great. Windows up. Voila! At my house, I have the previous generation SL called a R107. It's an 81 380 SL Mercedes, and this car drives like a refined version of that older Mercedes. The bones feel the same, and the experience is very similar. I mean, that older car is a little more floaty, and it doesn't handle quite as well. But the essence of what the SL was is still there, and this was always my favorite Mercedes aesthetically. I've never driven them that much, this uh, R129 platform. But now that I've driven this one around quite a bit, I can tell you it's probably, as far as European or German cars go in particular, it's probably right up there in the top, easily the top 10, probably the top five. And a lot of it has to do with the muscular appearance that these cars have. I mean, they just look great with the tops down, tops up. And um, I think with the, I've seen some color combinations in these that are really dynamite, just aesthetically pleasing. I uh, just don't know how else to describe it. It's just a nice car. I think this is, uh, I don't know if it was 306 horsepower or 200. I think there was 306 and 326 horse and I don't remember for sure. This is kind of like the last of the really good, classic, simple Mercedes, I guess you would call it. Try not to hit this guy on the lawnmower. Hey, how's it going there, pal? Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty sweet ride, that's for sure. nice um, aftermarket Pioneer stereo. I believe it has XM. Looks like it's got a CD player. It's got Bluetooth that's connected, so you got a nice modern radio. The original, I don't know if these still had blah punks or whatever in them, is included with the sale. There's all the navy blue. Uh, the seats have been redone. The airbag light is on. I think that's kind of a common problem with these. It's actually a common problem with a whole ton of cars, to be honest with you. All the gauges work, clockworks, classic Mercedes looking gauges. Got the little mile per gallon. You know, if you're putting your foot into it a little too heavy, it goes all the way to the right. That's where it kind of stayed while I've been driving it, like under 10, but I've been my relatives in Georgia would say mashing the gas pretty hard on this thing. Um, got the door panel three position memory for the seat looks like. I don't know how to use a lot of this stuff. Um, I'd have to sit and play with it for a while. I believe this is power mirrors. Looks like heated seats here. 
Uh, obviously, the power windows. It's got that classic gated Mercedes. Looks, this whole section right here looks a whole lot like the 1981 380SL I have at home. They even have the same colors. It's navy blue interior, white exterior. Um, don't get me wrong, though. This is a far, far cry from 1981. It just has all the throwback look with more modern and reliable function. Um, I think these were also really reliable Mercedes, from what I understand. Got some dome light action up here. Nice visors. Headliner. The rear package shelf has got some cracks in it. That only recently happened, and I think it happened when we had one of those cold snaps in Florida where it was really scorching hot for like two weeks, and then all of a sudden it went and dropped 30 degrees or something, and that seemed to have just kind of recently happened. I don't think it's a complicated thing to fix. Probably a handy upholstery shop or even a DIY project. The car's clean. It's just, it's a nice place to sit, believe me. Here's the uh, hard top and storage. It's got a cover and the stand with it. Nice white hard top included with the car with the stand and this nice cover. Here's the original wheels for that car. It's got some pretty good rubber left on these tires. Looks like, looks like they're a matching set. That's the old classic Mercedes design. I'll try to take a picture of this with my flash. It's pretty dark in this storage room. Okay, my Bluetooth microphone died during this segment. What I'm trying to say here is I took me a while to figure out how to open the trunk. You had to put the key in the lock cylinder and push it in and counterclockwise until there was a click, and then the trunk would open. And um took me a long time to figure that out. I think I'm losing it a little bit. I'm pretty sure the original stereo is in that box. Um, the Pioneer box, I think, has the original stereo in the box. And on the left, there is a new passenger side door mirror because the control motor doesn't work exactly right. Man, it was getting a little steamy out there on this river. I'm going to go ahead and head back to my friend's house and park this because it looks like there's a, as my relatives in Georgia would say, it's coming up a cloud. It's going to be listed on eBay. If you've got any questions about it, you can look me up on TikTok, Grease Belly Garage, Instagram, Grease. Both of these are actually Grease underscore Belly underscore Garage. I'll be honest with you. If I had the space and had the extra cash sitting around right now, I'd probably buy this car for myself. It's a really, really sweet, middle-aged, how you doing, pal? Middle-aged cruiser car, kind of like right up my alley. If there's anything I don't know about this car, I will find out for you as soon as I can. Um, it's had a lot of recent money spent on it, so it's a pretty sound rig certainly an attractive car and that rumble of that v8 if i had somebody that could videotape it for me i'd let you listen to it maybe we can do a maybe we can do a little sound bite with the ac off see if you can hear that yeah it's pretty sweet and if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel leave a comment down below tell me what you know about r129s um there's lots of things that I don't know about them, but tell me what you know about them. Any Mercedes fans that want to drop any random comments about R107s or any of the SL series cars, feel free to drop it down below. Subscribe to my channel, and as my relatives in Georgia say, mash that notification bell. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. See you next time. Right. Tune in again. Thanks for watching. Yep.